Model Making Guru is sponsored by emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. emodels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello. Now, very quick video. It's just a video response, really. Um, it's really a response to conversations that have gone on over the last week or so. Uh, in the chat on the Treehouse podcast last night, on the chat on the eModels podcast on Monday, and on a thread in the Boom Hut over the last few days. The conversation has been about the uh, C1 metalizer powder from C1 Models. Uh, it's basically a buffing powder that you... you you get your part of the model that's a glossy black or glossy whatever dark colour you want. You apply this powder on top, you buff it, and it's done. You've got a nice shiny metal surface. Now, the blurb that comes with this says it needs to go onto a gloss black lacquer or gloss black enamel base coat. It doesn't say anything about acrylics, but by omission, it suggests that acrylics won't work. Now, when I did the Master Chief, I did his visor, um, I did a black matte primer coat using the UMP black primer then I went over it with some Tamiya gloss black acrylic paint I know it's not technically acrylics it's like a lacquer acrylic I went over with that gloss black and then used the C1 powder and it came out okay the gloss black didn't go on very well it wasn't very smooth and it was a bit lumpy bumpy and it didn't look brilliant but it looked fine and it stuck but a few people have said that they've tried putting this on top of Tamiya gloss paints before and it's not stuck it just comes straight off so I wanted to test now I've got to figure out the thruster bells for my eagle so I've been doing some spoon tests and a fork. Spoon tests today. Uh, and I've been using Ultimate's Gloss Black Primer. Uh, same, it's basically the black primer, but it's gloss, not matte. And I've been testing this out and it's brilliant stuff. It works just as nicely as the normal, the normal black primer. Um, been using that. I've been trying out the, and you can't read it because it's shiny, thank you, Vallejo. Vallejo Acrylic Metal Colour Duraluminium 77702, or as everybody else in the world calls it, Duraluminium. Nobody can pronounce that. I don't know why. Nobody can pronounce it. It's Duraluminium. It's that easy. Or if you're American, Duraluminum. It's not hard. Anyway, so I've tried that, and I've tried the Seawall Metalizer Powder. Let me show you what happened. Now, all the all the utensils you're about to see were basically primed with the gloss black primer, and that was it. So, first off, we have gloss black primer plus the minimum paint. It's for you, aren't that one? And that's what comes out. Now, I didn't carefully apply this primer. I just really walloped it on, so it's not going to be the best finish in terms of being nice and smooth. I, I was just doing a quick rough test, so I just blomped this stuff onto it. I didn't take care with it. And the brush I used... To, for the sake of speed, I use my 0.5 water revolution, which is a bit knackered, so it's not a bit, a bit spitty. So it's not a brilliant finish, but it doesn't matter. It's just I want to see what the metal looks like. So this is the dura aluminium, dura aluminium, dura, it's the silver stuff, uh, and I did like quite a thick coat on this. Just built it up slowly, but did a quick, a thick coat, and it comes out all right. It's a bit patchy because the black underneath is a bit rough. Uh, but it comes out alright, it's quite a nice colour. Get a gloss varnish on that and some weathering on top, you'd have a nice kind of colour for the thruster bells. Uh, I'm looking to get a kind of turned aluminium but slightly dirty look. That looks pretty good. Then what I did was, I broke with model making tradition. Can you forgive me? I used a fork. <gasps> I know, I used a fork. Uh, same again, gloss black tip, which is bizarre because it's actually shiny black anyway, so I put gloss black primer on gloss black plastic. It was kind of hard to see, but this bit here. And again, I applied the duraluminium. But I did a thinner coat this time, and as you can see, again, it's quite a nice colour. It goes on really smooth, there's no real grain to it, and it's beautiful. I love it. That's really, really nice. So, that's a potential contender. That's a contender. However, then I went for the C1 Metalizer. Now, again, this is just on top of a coat of the Gloss Black Primer. There's nothing else on it. Primer slapped on haphazardly, not carefully. Then this was applied, and then it was rubbed off. And I got this. Look at that. That is gorgeous. It's not as reflective as proper chrome, obs. It's a powder. You're buffing it off. But I've used various different metallic things over time, and that is just beautiful. With a more careful application of the gloss black primer to get a nice smooth surface. I didn't wash the spoon or I just literally got this out of the drawer with all the dust and chip fat all over it. Slap the primer on. But with a careful application of primer. That is, that would be beautiful. That is stunning. Now, I don't know whether to use that for the thrusters, just for the extra bling factor. I know it wouldn't be quite, this is probably going to be better because it looks more like the real thing, but I might just use this just for the hell of it. I don't know yet. I don't know. 
Let's see what the bling is. Now I have in the past, when I used this last time on the Master Chief, I have put Pledge over this stuff and it works. It doesn't disrupt the, the, the powder at all. Uh, but it does take the shine off, the, the reflectivity off a little bit, but not much. So with the gloss coat over this, it might look just about right for the thrusters. But the big question is, not will it blend, will it stick? So what I did was put the powder on, immediately buffed it off with my little buffing pad. And now what I'll do is I will get a cotton bud and I will get a cocking tail stick. I will put on my space helmet so I can see because I'm an old man and I'll get my thumb of happiness. So first of all, let's get a thumb on there. Let's find a clean bit. <laughs> Big fat thumb print. You can see it there. Let me get a little cleaning cloth. Edit this bit out. Put those things in there. So I've got a makeup removey type pad, soft cotton thing. Let's just rub that off. Perfect, nothing, there's nothing there at all. So big fat thumbprint, And I've got greasy fingers, because if it's scratching my ass, picking my nose, I haven't really, I haven't really. Perfect. There's some mottling there, but that's because the primer underneath, because again, I just slapped it on. Not bad. Let's try with a cotton bud. Let's get a cotton bud, let's go heavy with it. You can hear it, I hope. Hang on. So I'm really scrubbing at that with the cotton bud. And you know what it did? It just made it even more shiny. Yeah, there's a few little marks in there, but it just kind of made it even more shiny. So I'm gonna buff this again, see if I can get it even more shiny. <laughs> This is pressing down quite hard. I'm sweating now. That's even more shiny. So, cotton bud, didn't take it off. Thumbprint, come straight off. Let's get a cocktail stick and see what happens. Let's do it right here where the shiny bit is. That's pressing down quite hard. Yeah, it scratched it. Of course it has. It scratched the crap out of it. Let's see what happens if we buff it. Yeah, buffing, 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 buffing. It's not got rid of the scratch, but it's kind of made it a lot less obvious. Let's really give it a good buff. Can you see where that scratch was? Just about. It's not gone through to the primer. The powder has rebuffed over it. Now it's still obviously there. You can still see it, it's still visible. But if this was on a model, you're not gonna be gouging a piece with the cocktail stick, you're gonna be handling a piece to put it in place. I might not even need to gloss varnish over this. The only test I need to do now is really just try putting an enamel pin wash over it to see if that disturbs the surface talk, because I need to put some weathering on the thruster bell. But if you've got a model and it's not gonna be handled other than when you first assemble it, and you've got gloves, so you can wear gloves to put it on, and you don't really want to use things like alclads and stuff like that because they're stinky and they're expensive and they're pain in the bum. I don't do lacquers. And they're quite delicate, they come off. Uh, and you want an easy way to do metallics. This. This took me about two minutes. As soon as the primer had dried, sprayed the primer on, half an hour later, slapped the powder on, took me about a minute, buffed it off, took me about a minute. And now I've got a metallic finish that's resistant to thumbprints, it's resistant to cotton bud attacks. It's not resistant to obvious scratching, obviously, because it'd be ridiculous if it was. That's probably more durable than Alclad. Now again, it's not maybe as chromey, chromey reflective as Alclad, but the pot of this will last you for years for a start, but that's a really simple way of doing it. It took me minutes. So I'm thinking now I might just do the engines on the Eagle with this stuff, just for the sheer audacity of having the most blingy engines in the world, because why not? But anyway, the whole point of this video was not to promote this stuff. Just go and get some anyway. Just go and get some. It's brilliant. I'm going to use this potentially on the big 160th scale Freedom Gundam to get the metallic finish. 
Uh, now I say I do need to do some tests whether it can withtake whether it can withstand say enamel panel line washes. If it can't, I'll have to gloss it first with pledge, but that doesn't really do much damage. The big test of this was to answer the question: Can you paint it over a base coat that's not lacquer and not enamel? Yes, you can. Paint it on top of that. Don't paint a primer and then a glossy coat. Just paint this because I was thinking, well, I've got only got acrylic primers. I could go and get some gloss enamel or some gloss lacquer, but then how would they react with the acrylic primers? I'd have to go and get a lacquer primer. No. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try this. I've got a bottle of this. Brilliant. So, yes, you can apply it over acrylics. Well, at least this acrylic. And this isn't sort of acrylic. This stuff. If you don't want to do primer, paint, and then this, and you don't want to buy enamels and acrylics, and uh, lacquers and everything else, get some of that, put some of this on. Just be careful with your application. Okay, make sure you get a nice smooth coat and you should be rewarded with beautiful, shiny, shiny metal. And like I say, there are more reflective and smoother solutions. It's still slightly out of focus. Yes, Alclads will give you an even more reflective finish. Alclads are a bit of a pig. They're very delicate. They can scratch off, but they're brilliant. But you know, hey, if you don't mind lack of fumes and paint that comes off every five seconds. So I just wanted to answer that question. It does stick. So that's it. That's all I wanted to do really. Show you that it does stick. Uh, and look at that. So anyway, take care. Speak to you soon. Uh, episode 8 should be going up on eModels in the next day or so. And then a few days later, it'll go up on my channel. So stay tuned for the Eagle episode 8. But until next time, go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios amoebas. Can you see me in the reflection? Uh... Pull it in a silly face. Here's my normal face. I'm insulting myself. I'm allowed to... Shut up. Bye.